thank you everybody for joining us today. We are so excited to have Jackson Shaw with us today. We um, decided to get a little festive, so we hope that you are. And if you're not, you have time because hopefully you're home or you know in a location where you can go just put some Christmas lights up or get a scarf or a hat and just join us. We're probably gonna sing, I don't know. We haven't decided what song yet, um, but we're really excited that you're all here. Um, Jackson Shaw, thank you so much for joining us. You guys are the podcast hosts um, of the Bubbly Sesh for Hallmark Channel. So um, let's just get right to it. Shaw, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and um, we'll start from there. Well, ladies, thank you so much for hosting us. I know Jax and I have been looking forward to this all week, so we so appreciate it. Um, I am a podcaster, obviously, working with Hallmark Channel, um, Hallmark Channel Bubbly Sash with my co-host Jax. Uh, I'm an actress as well and a mom. I have a four-year-old uh, little girl and uh, another little baby, a rescue pup, actually. So um, I consider my pups my babies, too. So, <laughs> um, And I'm living in, in New York City, and I'm originally from Georgia, so I made the move up here. And now I think I'm a New Yorker because they say after 10 years living here, you're like legit, you're a legit New Yorker. So I, I think I am now. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, good to know. And someday we're all just going to come visit you guys in New York and you can show us around. And um, that's definitely one of my top 10 favorite cities. So that's, I love it. And then Jax, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I got to say, it's like, oh, Shaw, we're so grateful to get to do this with you guys. But I don't know if New York City is ready for the four of us when we're able to hit the town together. Because <laughs> when you guys were on our podcast recapping USS Christmas, and then today, Shaw and I said so many times, like, we had so much fun. With, <laughs> like, it really has been a blast hanging out with the Colmas. So thank you. And thank you for letting us be here again today. Um, I'm originally from the coal region in Pennsylvania and I moved to New York. So I don't think I'm officially a New Yorker yet because on December 28th, 2010 is when I moved here. So I'm, I'm a couple of weeks away from being an official New York City, New York gal. So I'll get there and then I'll get my, you know, official New Yorker gold star. But I'm a podcaster. Shal and I have a blast together talking about all the Hallmark movies. And I'm also an actor. It's been really fun. It's, it's really the only thing I ever wanted to do was tell stories and talk and make people laugh. So <laughs> the fact that now I get to do it for my job is a lot of fun and I've done a lot of theater so I've gotten to travel a lot but right now I'm at home with my boyfriend and my cat all the time so it's great <laughs> because uh like Shaw said with our fur babies I don't have any human children but my cat now is wondering why I just won't leave the house so I think he's sick of me but I'm having fun I love it I love it What's your cat's name? My cat's name is Moriarty, named after Sherlock Holmes' nemesis, but I call him Artie to make him more relatable. Well, maybe Artie will make an appearance during the show. You never know. <laughs> he always does when we do stuff on our social. It's so cute. He'll just pop up. So I hope he, I hope he does, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> well, now I'm curious to know, does Moriarty have his own social media account? Well, uh, he does not actually, but Shaw and I actually met him together when he was filming for Hallmark Channel's The Kitten Bowl. And Shaw was like, I feel like he, that's your furry soulmate. And then I went home and I cried to my boyfriend. I was like, he's the one. We weren't even planning on adopting. So I got to thank Hallmark Channel, Emma Girl Shawl, and everyone. It, he's my adoption ever after. You know, people say you rescue animals. I was like, no, he he definitely rescued me. So he's a, he's a star. I call it your meow me cute. Their <laughs> meow me cute together at the Hallmark Channel Kitten Bowl, which is coming back in the new year. So um, that's always a fun show that I love that they do to support rescue animals. So <laughs> my gosh, it all comes back to Hallmark, doesn't it? Hallmark just brings everyone together, whether it's with your soulmate that's a human or your soulmate that's a, a pet. 
I just love it. Um, we're so happy that everyone's joining us live too, and we love to make connections with all of you. So we'd love to hear where you're joining us from today. Where are you having coffee with us from today? Please throw it in the chat box. Um, and if you have a LinkedIn profile, feel free to share that as well because we can all make connections you know, offline as well. Um, so let's, let's jump right into this. Now you guys talked about um, the USS Christmas. We're here today. But you, like you mentioned, we were on the Hallmark Channel's Bubbly Sesh podcast a couple weeks ago to talk about the movie USS Christmas. Um, for, for our viewers who haven't watched it yet, it's about lost love. It's about new love. It's about a type which we will get into. And it's even about a USO show. Jax, what did you learn about military life from USS Christmas? So yeah, this was a very romantic, wonderful, funny movie. Um, my dad served in the military. So I, I know a little bit about military life, but the thing is, is that I, my dad was in Vietnam, served in the army. So everything I know is from his time and his service. So watching this movie, something that I wasn't as familiar with as intimately is actually what military life extends like when your family is so immersed. And I think that what was so great about USS Christmas is that Maddie, the main character, her dad had served and then he had passed. And then her sister was currently serving. And I think that thinking about it as such an immersive experience and not how only the people who serve are affected, but how deeply the families are ingrained and they're a part of it as well, I think for me was the most touching. I love that. Well, and it was I, on our podcast, we, on your podcast, we talked about this too, where none of us had heard of a tiger cruise before. Right. Right. And I mean, it, I've been a military spouse for 11 years. Uh, Liz has been a, a military spouse for 11 years, and this was all new to us. So I did some research and I found out that, so our COO at the USO, Alan Reyes, he is in the US Navy Reserve. And so I said, Alan, do you have any experiences of a Tiger cruise? Because, you know, the Navy thing. And he said, actually, yes, I do. When he was a little guy, um, his dad was in the Navy and he talked about how um, proud he was of his dad and attending a tiger cruise, being on a tiger cruise and seeing the air or the aircraft lift off the boat, um, eating the Navy chow. And I have to make sure I get this right. He said he was so proud as his dad's kid to see his dad and his fellow sailors do their job. I mean, it was so cool. And then he said later on in life, when um, he was in the Navy, he was able to take his wife and on a Tiger Cruise and experience that as well. And then he wrote, Tiger Cruises are a special way for our sailors to share these two important worlds, our families and our navies, or in our, and our Navy with each other. I'm glad that the Hallmark Channel is sharing the story with everyone through the movie USS Christmas. So I thought that was really special that um, somebody from our team was able to share that. So I'm also curious if anybody that's joining us right now has ever been a part of a Tiger Cruise. We'd love to call that out later on. Danielle, um, who's producing right now, will be able to talk a little bit more about that when we check in with her. So thought that was really special, but Shaw. Special um, during the child to work day. You know, yes. like what, yeah. like, like, I mean, you know, you go visit your parents at work, but like that is, I mean, that's got to have been like such an incredible experience. So, yeah. so special. So special. And, and, you know, I was wondering, like, even for the other branches, I'm not aware in the Air Force if they do anything like that. And they might, um, but even for the Army or the other Coast Guard, all the other branches, um, curious to know if there's anything else out there like that um, where you're able to attend something with family member just to experience something like that. So definitely uh, in the chat box, let us know and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll call that out later. But Shaw, you mentioned, well, we had a conversation earlier and you mentioned your dad was a doctor for the VA. So did he yes. ever share any special stories um, with you about that? Yes, well, thank you for asking. Yeah, um, he, was, he was a doctor at the VA for 28 years. Wow. He's retired now, um, so 28 years of service there. Uh, and, oh, yeah, I mean, he would always come home, um, you know, talking about his patients and really their families uh, because he specialized in geriatrics. So he was dealing with a lot of servicemen and women who were a little bit older, who were at the VA's community living centers. 
And, um, you know, some of the stories were a little sad because uh, some of his patients obviously were in dementia territory because they were older. But what I always remember um, is the stories of the families and how devoted their families were to them. And, um, you know, my dad being a doctor always, uh, he always got some really fun gifts too, like gifts around the holidays from families or from patients. Um, the two gifts that he got that I think are just so fun. Um, one was a, a patient that ended up, you know, leaving the center and everything. Um, every Christmas, actually for three Christmases, and I think on his birthday too, would send him a $2 bill. Um, and I don't know if y'all have ever seen a $2 bill, I, it, but, but it's sort of a rarity. Yeah. And this was a veteran from um, World War II that would send him a $2 bill just for Christmas with a Christmas card saying, thanks, Dr. M for everything. I still remember, you know, our time together and just on his birthday or Christmas, because his birthday's in December, um, he would send him a $2 bill, which I thought was so cool and just so sweet. And another patient um, dropped by his office uh, and they would call him Dr. M because nobody could really pronounce our last name, Dr. Mentor. <laughs> so everyone just calls him Dr. M. Um, <laughs> stopped by over Christmas and gave him um, Christmas themed beef jerky. I didn't know there was Christmas themed beef jerky mm -hmm. out there, everybody, but there is. Um, and my dad's a vegetarian, so safe to say he just he accepted it and was so happy yeah. but, um one of his nurses ended up enjoying that gift but uh yeah he just talks about just how um how incredible these men and women are and really their families their families are so devoted to them so that's what I would always hear about I love that and two dollar bills too it's one of those things where yeah you see a two dollar bill you don't let go of that like you you stash that away you keep it so he has that forever to you know that will, he'll always see the two dollar bill and, and think of his patient he has a few yeah and he saved them specifically from this patient so it's so special i i gotta say the va doctors are the best because my dad did not start going to a va doctor until five years ago he had psoriasis his entire life he's been a specialist he's hit five years ago he went and his doctor at the VA found the right medication. He always says to me, he's like, why didn't I go to the VA sooner? So shout out to our VA doctors, oh. Dr. M. He wasn't my dad's doctor, but if he would have been, he would have cured his psoriasis too, because his VA doctor in Pennsylvania did. So he's like, why was, I should have been doing this for years. I was like, yeah, the VA. Yeah. No, it's really incredible that, that that's, something that's offered to our servicemen and women that they can get the care that they need. And um, I know my dad was just really proud to, to be a doctor there. And, um, and, you know, a lot of doctors that came out, he immigrated and a lot of doctors that came over actually went into private practice, but he really wanted to, to work for the VA and do that. So he feels very proud that he served for 28 years doing that. It's very special. I love that. That's, that's really cool. Um, it's amazing the connections that you can make through through your occupation. Truly, when you do something you love, it's never work, right? And going to, to work is fun every day. So that's a good segue into, I, I want to hear more and, and please share more with, your, with our audience about your podcast. We'd love to know, how did you two meet? How did the podcast come about? And how many have you all done since it first started? Jax, you want to take that one? Um, okay, we we're laughing about this beforehand because I was like, this is because it's the things you're talking about. I was like, Shaw, when they ask us about our origin story, could you tell it? Because I like the way that you tell it, but I was also just laughing because it was like, how many have we done? Um, <laughs> I, know, I know. Wait, Jax, I want you to say how our, our friendship. Oh, I met you? Yeah, our friendship meet you because okay. and then I'll, I'll do the podcast part. How about that? Let's pull it up. Oh. Okay, so our friendship meet cute because whenever we talk on the podcast about the meet cute moment of the couple, it's our meet cute moment, or during Christmas, it's our mistletoe moment, as you guys know, because you've been on with us. Our friendship meet cute moment was we were in acting class, 
And Shaw was doing a scene from, I think it was Scrubs. We were just like workshopping a scene for an acting class. And she was acting out this scene. And I was just sitting there. Like I have these hearts, my eyes, like I had this girl crush. I thought she was so funny that after the class, I was like, hey, and I was trying to figure out a way to be her friend. And she was so nice because I think I was worried I think sometimes I mean in the New York acting community really people are pretty friendly it's not like you may see on tv or what people think it is where people are ultra competitive I haven't really experienced that but sometimes people are a little bit guarded yeah. when you meet them just because that's a, a natural human thing but I think Shaw and I have very similar energies and <laughs> Instead of being scared away by my warmth and affection for her, she opened her heart to me and we became friends. So it was, it was really exciting that it, it's interesting too watching someone when you're talking about too, Liz, like if you're doing what you love, like Shaw's an incredible actress, but also she's doing something that she loves. So there's this synergy there that when you're doing that and you see someone in their element you're seeing a side of them like even when we're talking about the tiger cruises when you get to see people work yeah. i think it's incredible and people that you love don't even always get to see that side of you so i feel like even before i knew you i got to see a big part of your heart which is probably why we have gotten to form a friendship that has grown so quickly Oh my gosh. Well, same friend. I felt the same way about you. And, and yeah, I mean, so we completely hit it off ladies. And I, I'm sure there are plenty of people in the chat too, that can relate to that. When you meet a friend that you just instantly like, this is my person. Yeah, exactly. Like full on. Um, and so, you know, how we started the podcast is that we, uh, so after that moment, we sort of would see each other and hang out. Um, we'd see each other at auditions and stuff, but we didn't live in the same neighborhood. And in New York City, it is sometimes hard to like connect when you live in like different boroughs or different neighborhoods. Uh, but then Jax moved to my neighborhood and was like, oh my gosh, like we should hang out. And then we started hanging out and we wanted to do something creatively together. We didn't know what, we were like, maybe we'll do a short film together. Maybe we'll, you know, do something acting wise together. And then my husband actually gave me this idea of, well, one, I love when you, the two of you like have a topic that you get excited about or like you're debating about or something. It's so much fun to watch. Like I've always thought like you'd be really good at doing a podcast and you know, that could be fun. And at the same time, I was like watching Hallmark movies. Like it's nobody's business. I had my little baby girl at the time. And so, you know, when I was nursing or when I was just like chilling out, like that's what I would watch. And I would talk to my husband about it all the time. Um, and so he was like, hmm, maybe you could also chat with Jax about Hallmark movies. Um, and we went to drinks actually, like literally right a few days after that to go get some bubbly together. And we start, I said, I brought up a Hallmark movie and she goes, oh my gosh, I brought up Nine Lives of Christmas, which if anyone in the chat has seen it, you got firefighters, you got cute cats, you got romance handsome firefighters too. I'm telling you. Um, yeah. So uh, we completely, she goes, Oh my gosh, I love that movie too. And then we just started going down, like down the list of all these different Hallmark movies we loved. And then I pitched her this idea of the podcast. And then we were two bubbly gals drinking bubbly talking Hallmark channel movies. So hence bubbly sash. And um, that's how, how we started doing it. And we've been doing it now for three years. We've grown. We did it before we came to Hallmark Channel for a year. And then Hallmark Channel took us on. And it has been just honestly one of the most, it will go down as one of the most unforgettable like experiences in my life. Like when I look back, you know, like this is going to be a, a really cool thing that that we got to do together. And now that we get to share with all of you, including you, Liz and Nicole, because y'all were on with us. 
Well, and we have our meet cute now, you know, yes. so we all have, you know, <laughs> we all have meet cutes. <laughs> we met on a podcast over USS Christmas talking about tiger cruises. And now everybody that's joining us for this coffee connection, it's our meet cute. So it's just. And over coffee, that's like the cutest meet cute. Yes. That is like the ultimate meet cute. So <laughs> I love it. It's a love story right there. Oh. <laughs> It's perfect. And I mean, I love how, Jax, how you were kind of like so vulnerable to go up to Shaw and just be like, hey, because for military spouses, that is such a challenge because we're moving all the time. And it's always like, we just want to make a friend. We just want to make a connection. And and for Shaw to be welcoming you with open arms, I love that. So oh, that's, that's for all of us looking for friends out there, you know, just, yep. just got to go and, you know, friendly face, friendly smile go have a cup of coffee or a, a, a glass of bubbly and you know, you too can have your own meet cute. <laughs> <laughs> a friendship meet cute. I know that must be, I always do think about that. And even, you know, in USS Christmas, you know, they brought that up a little bit of just, you know, when her sister, she did get some time with her sister, but her sister had to go right back and, and report, you know, to duty and like, and, and also too, I'm sure, her fan, you know, so on one hand, I'm thinking like when I'm watching that movie, I thought, oh, that's interesting. The family that sort of quote unquote left behind when somebody goes and serves, right. but also when you are moving around and you are trying to form new bonds and, um, you know, make new friends and, and everything, they're both sort of difficult experiences to deal with, you know? Yeah. So true. So true. Well, and I love that the both of you also turned something that you loved into a career. And for military spouses, a lot of them are entrepreneurs. So um, it's very inspiring to all of us. So if anybody who is joining us now in the chat box, let us know if you're an entrepreneur and what you're pursuing and let us know a little bit more about that because we're very interested into hearing your stories. And then Jax, you started a board game with your sister. So tell us more about that because that's really cool too. Little Miss yes. Entrepreneur. <laughs> I love I love that you were saying that too about um military spouses being so entrepreneurial because one of my best friends from high school, Sophia, she started her own business too, and she's a military spouse. And now her son has his own business. So just before I talk about the board game, I wanted to say that like not only did my friend Sophia do it, her 16-year-old like now has his own business. So it's amazing how <laughs> resourceful people can be, but um my sister and I, we grew up playing board games. We've always been obsessed with connecting through other people through board games. It's always been like our hobby, something that we love. And we became sort of known as the board game sisters. But then three years ago, someone said, well, well I mean, would you want to turn this? It's sort of a hobby, but like, would you want to actually turn this into a real business do you have any interest in that and we were like oh I mean we never thought about it but yeah I mean let's give it a try let's do it so we made what was a very homemade version in fact I think Shaw has number I five I have number five it's your lucky number <laughs> yes it is. it is I feel so happy <laughs> and it is one of our OG bundles so that the name of the company is bundle that's our board game because everything we want to do is all about bringing people together so it's a personalized board game company where we get to know everyone that we make a game for by sending them a questionnaire we learn about their families they send it back and then we make a board game that is curated all for them so I think something that's been really interesting about that too is that we have made games for a lot of military families and their stories because they've traveled all around the world are always so interesting and fascinating. And actually we have now, especially with um, COVID and with everyone being separate, a lot of people, we started doing more virtual games. But our first virtual game that we made was for my sister's really good friend from college who was separated from her husband because he was serving in the military. So that's where we first got the idea that we could go virtual with our games. So it's interesting how much, even though we, our dad, like I said, he served, but we've been so separate from military life, but how a lot of what we've gotten to learn is through our board game company. So it's been really great. And I think being an entrepreneur is so wonderful because 
it allows you to have something that no matter where you are in the world, where you're traveling, it's home. It's something that is your own thing. I mean, your family is your home. That's your core unit, but then you also have your passion that you can do. So I feel really lucky that I get to be able to do it with my sister and learn about people and learn their story. So if anyone does want to get a game, it's the bundle game on Instagram, the bundle game.com on our website. But even if you just want to say hi, we really just like talking to people about their stories because we love telling their stories and learning about them. And you guys are so good at telling stories. I mean, I, I'm just having the best time sitting here listening to your stories and learning oh. more about you. And, oh, we do this every day. Um, <laughs> and I love I'm seeing I'm seeing some of the chats pop up on screen and I'm, I'm following on, along a little bit. We know that Hallmark movies are popular. I mean, who doesn't love them? I'm seeing some people in the chat box write about what their favorite Hallmark movie is. Um, but Shaw, I'm curious, do you have a favorite Christmas movie or a favorite on-screen moment? Oh my gosh. I really, it's so hard. People ask us this question all the time, right, Jax? And it's just, it's so tough to pick. I mean, what I will say, I, I, do, I have watched the movie Snow Bride, which is an oldie but a goodie. It's like from, I think, 2014. So it's back in the Hallmark Channel vault. But I have watched that movie a bunch. I love any of Lacey Chabert or Candace Cameron Bure's movies. They're just fantastic, those ladies. And one moment, I think, actually, in a Candace Cameron Bure movie, uh, the title is A Shoe Addict's Christmas, um, which is sort of a, it's sort of a fluffier title than what the movie is actually about. But there's one scene in the movie where uh, Candace's character and um, Jean Smart is in that movie, too, and she's sort of her guardian angel. Um, they're talking about, uh, in Hallmark Christmas movie language, all the sleighs that Noelle, her character, could have chosen or perhaps missed. And I love that moment because it's talking about all the choices we make in life and like, um, you know, all the different sleighs that we could potentially go on a ride on and, and what that, you know, you know, what could happen when you choose one thing over another. And so I love that movie um, and that scene specifically because it's, it's fun and funny, but it's also really heartfelt. And it made me think, you know, about the choices that I've made. So I love that movie. Yeah, awesome. so you have a favorite How about you? I was Wait, with me. Jack, I was gonna say, Jax, do you have a favorite <laughs> Christmas movie? Um, okay, so like Shell said, it's I mean it's kind of like <laughs> picking between kids, but I will say that a favorite moment from from I don't have any kids, but I'm sure it'd be hard to decide between them if I did. <laughs> but I will say that classic favorite Christmas movie is It's a Wonderful Life. Mm -hmm. And then the Hallmark movies, I'm going to go with the moment, just because thinking about a moment, I don't know if this is my all-time favorite, but this is a moment that really resonated with me from this year's stories that I think is particularly felt right now with a lot of us and the way we're connecting. I mean, even now we're all connecting virtually, but Christmas and Evergreen Bells Are Ringing, which is a series that we love. And Holly Robinson Pete, which is an actress that we love. I hope I'm not spoiling this if people haven't seen it yet. But there's a part in the movie where she connects with a loved one who can't be there. And it is the, it's virtual. And it is so beautiful and so intimate. And yeah. in that moment, that romance, it was almost as if he was right there. Like, I mean, he's a handsome guy. She's a beautiful woman. Do we want to wrap our, like have them wrap their arms around each other? Sure. But in that moment, you see that if the virtual connection is what we have, it can still be something that is so fulfilling and heartfelt. And there's a lot of gratitude that goes along with that too. So I would say that for me this year, when, when a lot of us are so separate from people we love, it really hit me. Yeah. I love that. I love that story. And a, a lot of us, well, and Liz just experienced this too, when her husband's deployed and my husband was deployed. And anytime we could have a moment virtually with our spouse, I mean, it was just, it pulls at the heartstrings every time. So yeah, I, I love that, you know, you're saying now in the virtual world, so many of us are experiencing this and 
it's just, yeah, absolutely. I, I'm with you on that for sure, yeah. for sure. So um, should we check in with Danielle? Because I know a lot of people are in the chat box talking about all the fun things that we're chatting about. So Danielle, we'll check in with you. What, are, what, what do we need on our radar right now? Oh gosh, let me tell you, we have a hearty here, a really devoted um, when calls the heart fan. <laughs> and yes, definitely talking about favorite Christmas movies. They're agreeing with you. It's a wonderful life. Um, someone said their besties. Fast, our favorite movie is Snow Bride as well. Um, so and we have an entrepreneur, some of Mill Spouse, who started a blog. I think she said 10 years ago, almost 10 years ago, and she's just been really happy with the community that came out of it. So um, we're having lots of fun in the chat here. So thanks, everyone. Oh, that's incredible. I also have a blog, too. I didn't mention that, but I, I, I just started blogging. So um, it is a really cool experience to, to do, not only to write about certain things and be creative that way, but also the community that it creates, too, is really cool. So... I love What's that. your blog called? Um, it's just, it's on my website. Okay. It's just at shalinibmh.com. And um, I write different posts about motherhood and sometimes about pop culture, um, movies, or um, I also do a, a top five feel goods every week, like feel good news items that I love. And I have another podcast that I just do called Feel the Good, where I get to interview people that are doing good, feeling good and spreading good. And so that's up there too. So I'll do some blog posts about that as well. Oh my gosh, awesome. I love it. Well, and I almost want to put you on the spot and tell us five feel good things. Can you tell us five feel good things? Oh my gosh. Oh, well, I mean, five feel good things. I mean, you know, typically I do like my news items for the week. So I have to sort of like, let me, let me think about it. I mean, I definitely know one already that I would say is this Coffee Connections Live is, is cheers to that because like I said, I've been looking forward to it all week. And then, I mean, you know, the other one is Homer Chimp. This season of movies has been just incredible. And I think, you know, especially right now when we all do need that connection, this virtual connection is great, but also if you get to escape for a little bit and just watch a movie, enjoy it, feel comforted by it, you know, that just makes you feel good. You know what I mean? And I think we all need, especially if we're all at home too, mm -hmm. you know, like that just brings a lot of joy, I think too. But I'm going to, I'm going to think on it, Nicole, maybe I can come up with a few more. Totally fine. And I love with the movies too, the Hallmark movies, especially is when you watch one and then your friend watches one, or you find somebody that's watched one with you. And then you, you can bond over that, that movie, just over the, the things that you loved, um, the things that you gush over, uh, <laughs> things like that. So uh, yeah, absolutely, for sure. And then Liz, did you want to ask them one of the questions that one of our registered spouses um, wanted to know? Absolutely. So we, we ask everyone when they register if they have any questions ahead of time so we can be prepared with answers. Missy, who's a Navy spouse from Wisconsin, had asked what your favorite Christmas movie is, and we had already gotten into that. Um, so I will move down to Casey, who is an Army spouse from Washington State. She would love to know from both of you, what is your favorite holiday tradition? Um, I have to say, and it, it's, it's going to look a little different this year, because I think that we're trying to figure out a way to Zoom it. Um, but I love going to Christmas Eve Mass with my family. Um, it, it's always to me, it's so special, but it sounds, if you probably have an idea in your head of what it looks like, we're sitting in the pew, we're all decked out and these outfits. No, what my family likes to do is they like to get there right before it starts and stand in the back because everyone, it, it, it's not even like the cool kids stand in the back and it's not even like we're <laughs> late, but the rest of our cousins and other family members who we don't see for a while they stand in the back so for some reason the tradition it's not even this like 
iconic like oh this is the way it looks and and it's like this movie moment but it's our movie moment because our family's a little quirky and we are all in the back at Christmas Eve mass and I just love it so much and and this year it will be different but I just think it's so special and I look forward to doing it every year so this year when we're zooming in for it I'm gonna have to find a way to make it make it the standing in the back of the church feeling is what I'm gonna workshop that for me, you guys, and let me know what you think will work for that. Stand in the back of the house, back of the room. Yeah, and- back of the room. Maybe the if it's on Zoom, like your windows can all be like <laughs> touching each other so that it looks like y'all are all standing next to each other in the back. Like I don't know. It'll be memorable <laughs> either way. It'll it'll be good. Absolutely. Um, oh my gosh. Wow. Uh well, thank you, Casey, for that question. I I love that. I love talking about Christmas. I love talking about Christmas. Um, but Christmas tradition. I think I'm gonna a classic one for us is putting up the tree. It is just so special. And my daughter this year, she's four, so she really, really got into it this year. You know, and I don't know if anybody in the chat or you ladies, um, if your kids at that age, like I don't know. I just saw a change this year where she was pulling out the ornaments and she's putting them up and she put our little angel up on top of the tree. And virtually we did get to FaceTime with our other family members and they were doing their trees at the same time. So we we sort of got a little big family decorating the tree moment together virtually. But yeah, there's just something so special about putting Christmas music on and, um, you know, pulling out all the ornaments. And I still have a a, we have a paper plate angel on our tree that I made actually in first grade that, oh, is, I love still, it. that is still kicking it, man. I mean, just, we had to add a little tape this year, but she's still, she's still going strong. <laughs> so she, she was on top of the tree um, and my daughter loved putting her on there. So really special. We decorated our tree this year. We had to put, we have a one-year-old, so we had to put all the ornaments. It's kind of like, yes. the is, there's no ornaments on the bottom. Yes. It's kind of heavier uh, on top. So, you know, if anybody were to come in and see our tree, they'd be like, but it's fine. It's, you know? Yeah, we had to do that too, Nicole. I, I remember that. And even for our, our dog, we try to keep things like sort of like mid-level up, even though he, he won't bother them now. But if you have a puppy or something, and I don't know with a cat, Jax, if there's there's constant hitting of the ornaments or uh... <laughs> there there is, but I mean I am yeah. not a disciplined cat mom. He just gets to do it and knock it off, and then I pick it up. So <laughs> <laughs> I love it. There's no teachable moments in there, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Like you're just gonna you're gonna keep doing it and I'm gonna keep doing it again. It's I, I love the way you said that, Liz. It's like that's the, you just resign yourself to that. Can you tell that I'm a mom? Yeah. So my, kids are, my kids are six and eight. And up until this year, I, I was thinking about it, Shaw, as you mentioned it, doing the tree has not really been a thing until this year. Yeah. Um, because they're finally old enough to really actually help. I mean, when they were little, I'd pretend that they were helping, you know how it is. Um, yep. <laughs> the tree is real heavy on the ornaments at the bottom now because I didn't want my kids on the ladder because it's 2020 you just never know what's going to happen so all of our stuff is down low but my six-year-old <laughs> likes to redecorate the tree every day she comes home from school and she looks at it she says no this one needs to be here and she's constantly moving around the ornaments so everything on the bottom is changing and they're all dangling too low and luckily our dog is too old to even know that there's a tree next to him but um, it's becoming more of a thing. I hardly had to do any of the decorating this year. And yeah. we, still have, we still have put the star on top and my kids are not going to let Christmas come without the star on top. They keep telling me, when are you going to put it up? When are you going to put it up? It's going to happen. But so, uh, these, these traditions sort of morph, right? And become something because our kids have made them something. Yeah, definitely. And it's I so love- funny that she does the same thing. She'll come home and she'll reposition them or she'll be she'll, or she just want to look at one again and then put it up so it's really it's it's super cool and, and they totally have opinions about which yeah. ornaments go up I mean we've got boxes of ornaments that haven't gone up because they're so focused on the ones that have to I'm, I'm gonna eventually have to get like seven different trees to get all of our ornaments up so <laughs> that's okay that's okay I'm here for it I am here for it. My sister got three trees this year. She's like, I'm going all out. And she even started decorating in July. So this is how, how Christmas nuts she is right now. But 
it just brings joy. You know, it's, it's really cheerful. Yes. See? I, I, yeah. I love picturing between Liz and Nicole having one tree that's completely decorated because all of Liz's ornaments are on the bottom and all of Nicole's are on the top. And you're like, yeah, put these two together. You know, and it works. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. I, love I mean, it. nobody's coming over to see it this year because we can't get together, so it's fine. We did have to tie ours to um, fish line, you know, so it doesn't tip over. So, you know, safety first. I, I, um, but we do have another question from Alexandra. Um, she's an Army spouse from Texas, and she wants to know, and I, I think this is great. She wants to know, do you have any tips for um, someone looking into starting their own podcast? Well, that's a great question. I mean, we started our show was like producing and editing and doing all of it ourselves. So, I mean, I think it's a good question for you because you were doing all the heavy lifting and I was doing I was, uh, half the talking. But yeah. so we, what would you, what would, I mean, from my perspective, it was find someone that you trust and you like and you want to talk to. But what would you say, Shaw, about actually starting a podcast? Well, um, yeah, I mean, one, if you're going to do it with someone else, like Jack said, it's so important to find someone that you really connect with, that you trust, that you, um, you know, figure out what you're going to talk about if you're going to do it together. But even if by yourself, first figure out what you want to talk about, because podcasting, it's very interesting. You would think, I think a lot of people think you just get the microphone and you just, you, you talk. Um, but it's, it's a lot more than that. Like even in our show, Liz and Nicole, you know, I mean, we have segments on our show so that we can like specifically talk about pieces of the movie. There's a structure to our show. So like every show has a structure. Um, and yeah, I mean, you do have to figure out too. Uh, so, so finding out specifically what you want to talk about, figuring out the structure of the show and then yeah, editing it. Are you going to get somebody else to edit it? Are you going to learn how to edit? The cool thing is, is that, I mean, talk about virtual stuff. YouTube is like amazing for tutorials. There's free editing software for podcasting, or you can purchase editing software and learn it. That's what I ended up doing. Um, but, and that was a big, like, I got in my head about being scared to learn something new like that. And I don't know if any of you ladies like can relate to that or anyone in the chat, but like, just go for it. Just try it, just do it and see what happens. Because the more and more I, I did it and I'm a big perfectionist. So I like the first few episodes, if you listen to our episodes, I don't think they exist anymore. Thank goodness. <laughs> Nobody can actually listen to them. Um, but they were a hot mess safe to say. Uh, but all that being said, you keep trying, you keep doing it and you get better and better and better. And um, so, yeah, I mean, the editing software is out there to learn how to edit, figure out the structure of the show and figure out what you're going to talk about and just have fun. And then just, just have fun. It's, it's one of the best things that I think Jax, I mean, like we, we didn't know what we were doing. And then when we started getting into the groove, like it's so much fun to do. It's like one of the, my favorite things to do now. I am yeah. a podcast because of it. I, I, I love it. So it's really fun. What if I was like, and my advice is just to find like one of your best friends to talk to and make them do all the work. <laughs> I mean, I'm kind of kidding, but also like. And also she's shortchanging herself because when you do have a co-host, it is, it's really important that they bring that chemistry. She brings so much energy. She brings so much insight that I don't have. Like we'll have, I mean, and Nicole, you and Liz, you both saw, and you both added so much to our episode when we did USS Christmas, where when everybody has different insights, it's so cool to hear like, oh, this is what you noticed. This is what you noticed. Um, and sharing in that conversation. So, uh, I think that's really cool too. So don't shortchange yourself, Jax, because oh, oh, you oh, no. Oh, no, no. I mean, I just think it's great though that that I think some people when they're thinking about starting an endeavor, you start to think of all the things that sometimes it's so exciting to think about learning new skill sets. And then sometimes it's like, oh, that's so overwhelming. I would never do it. And and the truth of it is, is that like now, I mean since we came to Hallmark Channel, like I, I love collaborating with you. I love being partners, but I never would have 
the editing aspect it all would have been too much for me that I never would have started no matter what. And not saying that anyone should be discouraged by that. That's me, not you. But I think that thinking yeah. about what you're, what new thing you're excited about learning. And then if you aren't excited about learning that thing, finding someone who either already knows how to do it or is on fire for learning how to do it is great yeah. too, because just start. That's always such a great thing to do is to, don't worry about it. Just dive in and you will figure it out, especially military spouses, because no one is more That's resourceful right. than you guys. <laughs> and if anyone has, I mean, we, you know, we'll share our social media and stuff at the end, but feel free to DM us if you ever want. I mean, we're accessible gals here. So like, if you ever want advice or I mean, want to figure out how to do it, like we're happy to keep chatting about it. So don't hesitate to reach out. You guys are awesome. Awesome. Well, and I want to check in with Danielle because I see there's a lot still going on in the chat. So Danielle, is there anything we can bring to Jack and Jack's and Shaw's attention? And just thank you for those tips. We actually have someone saying um, that they have thought about starting a podcast, but never took any steps. So just um, they were thankful for the insights. It's been helpful. Um, and then talking, you know, about how many Christmas trees everybody has as well. It's just like, you guys <laughs> <laughs> does anybody out there have like 10? I would not blame just them. Just two. Um, yeah. two, okay. is, two is what we saw a lot of people saying that they have. Um, and just everyone really talking about um, how much they love the excitement of little children at Christmas and those holidays as you guys were talking about your kids and your fur babies. Um, so that resonated with everyone. We had fun talking about that as well. Very cool. Awesome. Well, ladies, you have mentioned that you're both in New York City. And I have visited a few times, Nicole, I know this, we're like, we can't wait to get to New York City um, together with you guys. So tell us, what is one of your favorite things to do in New York City during the holidays? I feel like New York City is magic right now. Yeah. Oh, um, oh sorry, Jax, go ahead. Oh, no, the, no, I was just saying, it, New York City is magical around the holidays and even during the Hallmark movies when they pop up and they're set in New York, I get all excited, especially this year because I'm not out doing as much stuff. But last year, my boyfriend took me to, um, it, it, there was this little snow igloo thing that was right by the Rockefeller tree. And it was so romantic and it was so much fun. And it was very classic, quintessential New York rom-com. All the things that I like morphed into one thing. And of course we got the hot chocolate before with all the whipped cream. I know we all like our treats. Like it was like, we <laughs> went and we did the darn thing. Like we, and we packed it all in. And it's funny because I, I didn't grow up doing a ton of decorating or a ton of activities like that. And I grew up in a really small town. But my boyfriend and I love New York so much that since we started dating, he just plans itineraries, or he, he would before this year, of all the New York City things that we would do that were the most Christmassy. So I feel really lucky to live in a city that is filled with so much magic at Christmas time. And even now, watching the tree lighting, I thought was really special that they found a way to do it safely this year, even though people couldn't be there, I thought it was really special. So even though it was from my apartment in New York City, I still got to go to the tree lighting. Yep. Cause you could yeah. still watch with your hot chocolate and whipped cream yeah. and everything like that. That's you know? right. Yes. And I did want to ask Jax real quick, did have the carriage rides in New York City, have you done this? Okay, so I have not done a carriage ride, but what I have done is I've talked to the horses. Okay. And so um, my boyfriend loves horses and he grew up, um, in England and like, he'd be around wild horses. So I was always afraid to get close to them, but we would go and he's like, let's go talk to the horses. So we've not taken a ride yet, but we went and he would say, let's go talk to the horses. And one of the, um, I don't know if you call them carriage drivers or dashing man with a top hat but that's what he was in my mind he let us talk to the horse and my boyfriend's British and very charming so 
he can talk to anyone. So the 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 carriage driver let us talk to the horse. So that's as close as I as I've gotten to that dream. Perfect. And, and this weekend we're actually doing it with another family. We're going to check out the Rockefeller Center tree. They are allowing people to come, but it's um they're socially distancing everyone and you actually have to make a reservation. So they are being safe about it and they have like specific markers where people have to stand to look at it, but we're going to be checking that out with another family um, of ours. So we love doing that. And then also in my neighborhood specifically, they have a Christmas tree lighting every year. Um, Jax and uh, her boyfriend, Alex, have come before with us. And it is just so wonderful. They bring carolers in. Um, everybody has these, um, not real candles, but like battery operated candles. We have a caroling sheet. We sing carols and then they light the, our little neighborhood tree in our neighborhood park. Um, this year, they are not doing it the same way, but I think they are gonna make a virtual something where everybody can sort of look at the tree or you can, you know, they might space people around to watch, but it's gonna be a little different this year, but still, I mean, we're still enjoying all the tree lightings that we can, but that's my favorite is- well, Kudos to the creativity this year too, how people yeah. are, you know, we can't be there this way or how we did it last year, but we can do it this way, which is yeah. so cool to see what everybody's doing. So um, let's see here. I wanted to get to, oh yeah, Michelle, a Marine spouse from North Carolina. She wanted to know what is the most unique story a Hallmark Channel star has told during a podcast interview? Oh my gosh. Well, I mean, they all have great stories. I, I hate to say that, but they, they really do. They're all, all of our talent at Hallmark Channel is so interesting. Um, but Lacey Chabert actually, uh, on, an, on a chat with us, we were talking about a Christmas movie, uh, Christmas Melody, which also starred Mariah Carey. And, you know, talk about, you know, Mariah Carey, the Christmas season. I mean, I know we're all listening to that song. If you're not, you know, yes, all I want for Christmas is you, baby. Um, but we asked her about working with Mariah and did they sing together? And Lacey said, you know, the funny thing is that we, we they didn't sing together, but Mariah call, called her phone um, while they were working together, um, right, right before they got to set together because it was Lacey's birthday. And Lacey didn't pick up the phone because she doesn't pick up numbers sometimes that she doesn't know. And she said she was so glad that she didn't pick up the phone because Mariah Carey left her a voicemail singing happy birthday to her. And of course she'd never share it. She told us, you know, look, I'd never share it publicly, but I have kept that voicemail forever because Mariah Carey's singing me happy, you know, happy birthday. So I thought that was a really fun story. Um, also another, you know, queen of Christmas there, Mariah Carey, Lacey Chabert, like it just, I loved that story. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just envisioning me like playing it through my speaker. Yes. <laughs> Play Mariah Carey from my voicemail. You know? yes. Exactly. Exactly. I wish the yeah, Mariah Carey would call all of us and wish us a happy birthday. Yes. <laughs> Well, it looks like we are almost at time. So I know that a lot of the viewers want to do a selfie with you guys um, so that they can say that they had coffee with Hallmark Channel's The Bubbly Sash Girls. So let's get ready for a quick selfie. Any, anybody joining us right now, feel free to get out your phone and take a selfie with us. That part's always a little awkward. Um, <laughs> I know your face. I'm just like. <laughs> right, right. If somebody just started tuning in, they're probably like, why are they frozen? It's, you know, it's fine. Like, listen, it's better than when my face actually freezes and it's like always like, like, it's just like, that. <laughs> it's just the worst facial expression of me when it freezes. So this I like. <laughs> yes, we're good. We're good. Yeah. Excellent. Well, we can't wait to see that on everybody's social media. So make sure to tap hashtag USOCC live and we'll, we'll take a look for those. Um, ladies, Jack Shaw, thank you so much for such a fun day. Very holiday spirited coffee connection. Um, any last words for our viewers, for your fans? 
Oh my gosh. Well, ladies, I mean, we just have to, again, I mean, you know, this has been such a pleasure. I really feel like I'm so grateful to Hallmark Channel and to the USO for connecting us because now I feel like I have two new friends, um, which is so amazing. And if anyone wants to listen to the podcast or find out more about Hallmark Channel's Bubbly Sash, we do cover the Hallmark Channel movies year round. We interview talent year round. Um, you can go to hallmarkchannel.com slash the bubbly sash or you can find us on any podcast app and you can subscribe so you don't miss you know, any of our episodes or recaps or our talent interviews. And we have to have you ladies on again. That would be, that would be so much fun. Anytime. <laughs> yes. Just yeah. tell us when and where we'll be there. Perfect. You're, you're committed now. I'm yeah. telling you, like, don't think this is like a low level, like, oh yeah, this is like, we will ask you. So get ready. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Liz. And, and thank, thank you, Nicole. Thank you, USL, everyone. Danielle, thank you so much. Trish, everyone behind the scenes. Everyone we talked to from the USO has just been amazing. And I mean, the entertainment that the USO provides to have had comedian friends that have worked with the USO. And it's just so incredible. We're, I'm just so grateful that we got to get connected. So thanks for doing this with us today. Ladies, we appreciate you being here with us so much. We hope the rest of your 2020 is only better than it has been. Um, happy holidays to you. We hope you all stay safe, stay healthy. And to all of our viewers and everyone watching after the fact, we appreciate you being here with us in 2020. We look forward to being with you again in 2021. Happy holidays, stay safe, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, happy everybody. Holidays. Bye.